Welcome to Electron Online. Now let's look at the naming conventions on angles when it deals with two parallel lines and what we call the transversal. So here we have two lines that are parallel to one another, as we will see in a later video, that when two lines are parallel, they will never cross. If you can continue drawing these out, out to infinity, they will keep the same distance from one another. That determines that they are parallel. Now if we draw a single line across these two parallel lines right here, we then create eight angles. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, eight. Now let's talk about these angles because they have specific names. The ones above and below the two parallel lines, now of course the parallel lines could have been turned around like this, then it would be outside on this direction, outside on that direction, just on the outside of the two parallel lines, we call those angles, notice 1, 2, 7, and 8, they're called exterior angles. Then the angles in between the two parallel lines, 3, 4, 5, and 6, those are called interior angles. So we have the exterior angles and the interior angles. We also have what we call corresponding angles. Number 4, number 8, these two are corresponding angles. Notice that the angular size of 8 must be exactly the same as the angular size of 4. So 4 and 8 are corresponding angles. It turns out there's three other pairs of angles that are corresponding angles. For example, 6 and 2 are also corresponding angles. 1 and 5 are corresponding angles. And 3 and 7 are corresponding angles. So we have four sets of corresponding angles with one example here on the board, 4 and 8. Now let's look at 3 and 6. We look at this interior angle and this interior angle and notice that the angular measure of these two angles are the same. They also are on the opposite side from one another, opposite on the transversal. So we have a special name for those. Those are called alternate interior angles. They're on alternate sides and they're interior angles. So we call them alternate interior angles. Now, since 3 and 6 are alternate interior angles, what about 4 and 5? Sure enough, 4 and 5 are also alternate interior angles. And again, 4 and 5 have the same angular measure. 3 and 6 have the same angular measure. What about angles 4 and 6? Now, they don't have the same angular measure. Notice that this angle is less than 90 degrees. This one is greater than 90 degrees. In actuality, they add up, those two angular measures add up to 180 degrees. They're on the same side as the transversal. They're interior angles, so 4 and 6 are called interior angles on the same side of the transversal. Hmm, that seems straightforward enough. They're interior angles, they're on the same side of the transversal, so we just call them interior angles on the same side of the transversal. But now we have a language in which we can actually point out specifics about these particular angles and we have specific names for them. And later on we'll learn all about what's so special about these angles and how to deal with them because this kind of scenario actually comes up a lot in all kinds of applications of mathematics and physics and so forth. So it's good to know the nomenclature, the names of these kind of things. So now you're really equipped to really handle angles in all kinds of ways, in all kinds of shapes, in all kinds of situations. So let's continue with different kinds of names and nomenclature for other kinds of situations in geometry now that we have the angles under control. So stay tuned, we'll have some more videos on different kinds of names in geometry.